What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a low angle metropolitan city shot as you have seen in the City Builder 3D asset based add on trailer. Unlike our previous videos, which were more of breakdowns, this video will be more of a step by step tutorial on how you can create a shot like this. We will be covering the addition of the City Builder 3D assets to your scene, the addition of the background plate, the lighting of the scene, and of course, animating the camera and preparing your project for export. Anyways guys, let's get started so here we are inside of blender let's go ahead and delete everything in our scene right now and the first thing we are going to do is add a plane to be our ground so let's press shift a and add a plane and let's just scale it up a little bit here and we'll make the material for this plane just something dark something like this so that we have some shadows coming from the ground. Since our shot is going to be low angle, it's important that we have something dark to use as our ground plane for accurate shadows. All right, so now let's go ahead and add our City Builder 3D assets to our scene. We will go to the City Builder 3D tab, and in this specific tutorial, we will be using the Metropolitan assets here, but feel free to use the Sci-Fi Future or the Derelict Future as well. I'm just going to click where I want to add the asset and then add the asset by clicking on the button here. This one's pretty cool. This is Metro Large 5, and then we'll add about three buildings here. We'll add Metro Large 1 maybe. This is pretty cool as well. And then we'll, maybe we'll add Medium 3. These are just three pretty cool assets that come in the City Builder add-on. You have some pretty cool uh, rooftop elements here. Got some satellite dishes. and uh, This one's probably one of my favorites because you got this cool brick column along with the rest of the building. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and set up our shot with a camera here. So today we're going to be using the Cable Cam Cinematic Movement Rig as well, which of course comes for free with the City Builder 3D download. So let's go ahead and import a Cable Cam into our scene. What we'll do here is we'll scale our cable cam down. And then we'll actually select the rest of our assets here. And we'll scale them up a little bit. One way I like to work in Blender is by opening up a second window where the camera perspective is going to be. So to do that, we'll just drag our window over here. And then we'll just go to View, Viewpoint, Camera. And now we can see through our cable cam camera. And what we want to do is just create kind of a low angle shot here. So let's just go ahead and start positioning these buildings where we would like them. Maybe one will be here. Kind of, we can position them more accurately once we get our camera aligned. And I might actually just scale this one up a little bit just for fun. So something like this. We'll add one more metropolitan asset here. Maybe Metro Large 3. That's kind of cool. So position this one over here. Move this down so it's on our plane. Okay, so this is pretty cool here. Let's go ahead and position our camera. So to do that, first we're going to choose where we want our camera to look. So say we want our camera to look at the top of these buildings right here in between these two. We'll just take our pen and tilt control for the cable cam rig and we'll just put it up to the buildings here. And now we'll select the base of our rig here. And then we'll just push this. To deal with the view of our cable cam rig here, what we can do is just scale this down and now we don't see it anymore. So now we have this cool kind of low angle shot of our city here and let's reposition some of these buildings to give it a little cooler look. Maybe we'll put this one over in the shot a little bit more. Something like this is kind of cool. We'll also get this building in the shot more as well. Kind of put this To, this is kind of cool. Then we can also change where our camera is pointing here. Maybe we want it a little bit down. Push this over a little bit. Just kind of play around with where your camera is and where your camera is pointing. So we're going to do a pretty basic move for this tutorial, but it still will look pretty dynamic. We'll just do a little kind of push in on these buildings. 
But before we do that, let's set the start and end frame of our animation. So here we have our start and end frames here. Let's go ahead and change the end to 100. That'll be about a four second animation. And now what we're going to do is we will select the cable cam base and we will press G and Y and we'll move it back a little bit here. While our cable cam base is selected, we will press I and then add a keyframe for location, rotation, and scale. And now we will go to the last frame of our animation, frame 100, and then we will press G and Y again, and then kind of push this up somewhere around there. And then once again, we'll press I and add another keyframe for location, rotation, and scale. And now, as you can see, if we scroll through our animation here, we get kind of this cool push in dynamic shot looking up at these metropolitan buildings, looking up at the city here. We can also animate the pan and tilt control as well using the same technique, but you get the general idea. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add our background plate. In this specific tutorial, I'm going to use a background plate of these storm clouds, which looks pretty cinematic. It's pretty much just an image that we're projecting onto a plane. And then we're going to use that image data as an emission shader to essentially just make that be a part of what's lighting the environment. And it'll create awesome reflections on the buildings and all kinds of cool stuff like that. The exact file we're going to use is this storm clouds extra here. I just got this off of pixabay.com. It's a royalty free image website, so feel free to check it out and uh, download your own background plates or pictures or whatever. So to add these storm clouds as a background plate, we're going to add it as an image on a plane using using the images as planes add-on here. If you don't have this add-on enabled, what you need to do is you need to go to edit, preferences, make sure that add-ons here is selected, and then under the search bar just type in images and then it should pop up images as planes and make sure that your checkbox here is selected so that this feature is enabled. All right, so now we can go ahead and X that. And now let's go ahead and import our clouds texture as a plane. So let's go to file, import images as planes. And then we will navigate to where we have that file saved, which is right here. And then click import images as plane. All right, so now our image is into our scene here. Now we need to position it correctly for our background. So we'll just press G and Z, bring it up here to where the sky would be. We'll scale it up a little bit so that it's covering our shot. Maybe we'll rotate it down a little bit so it's kind of the perspective of the camera and scale it up some more. You get the idea, just kind of position it where it makes sense. And then we need to make sure that it covers the sky for the entirety of our animation. This is going to cover our shot, but before we do anything else, we need to make sure that the material that the texture has on it is an emission shader. So to do that, we want to go ahead and select the background plate and then go to the material tab here. And we're going to change these material to an emission shader. Then here we'll select the image texture option and then we'll find that storm clouds texture that we imported. All right, so now we are set up for a test render. One thing we need to do, however, before we render is make sure we're switched to the cycles rendering engine here. So we'll do that. Then I'm also going to add a basic sky to our scene just to start out with before we tweak it. To do that, let's go to our world panel here. And then under the color section, we will change this to sky texture. And what we want to do once we render this is we want to try to match this preview version of our sky texture to the color of the sky as best we can. Another thing you could do is use an HDRI of clouds to match this environment more accurately. But in this specific example, we're just going to use the sky. All right, so now let's go ahead and test out our render and see what we're getting so far. Since we have some pretty big textures on our City Builder 3D assets, sometimes it can take a while to do your initial render, but after that it should pick up speed. So this is our rendered view of our scene, and there are a few things that, of course, we should change. It's looking pretty cool, but there are a few adjustments I want to make before rendering this out. Let's go ahead and just tweak the positioning of a few of these assets, maybe bring some of these closer to create a little bit more of a dynamic shot here. Just kind of reposition our assets a little bit. We might change the position of our 
rig here as well. And this is looking pretty cool. It's not perfect. We can kind of play around with how we position our assets in the scene to create kind of a different style or different shot. But this is looking pretty cool for the sake of our tutorial here. One thing to take note of is that when you're lighting your shots, it's important to match the lighting to your background plate or to your environment essentially. Since we have a cloudy background, we don't really need to add, for example, a sun to our scene because the cloud would be covering the sun in this specific environment. But one thing we do need to match is the world surrounding these buildings that's lighting them from the sides. So what I usually do is I play with the world settings of the sky texture and just change some of the settings here to match this preview window to the background plate as closely as possible. So I might increase the turbidity a little bit change change this up a bit as well and we're trying to get it so this matches this more closely and again you can use instead of the sky texture you can just use an hdri of the environment that you're using but for this tutorial we're just going to use a normal sky texture example this is looking pretty cool you can also change the strength of different uh aspects of things but this is looking pretty nice uh, i like the reflections of our sky onto our buildings here one thing that you can also play around with is the focal length of your camera so you can uh, this is actually we're on a pretty wide lens right now so you would just select your camera on your cable cam rig and then you can change the focal length in the camera settings tab here depending on how wide or how tight you want your lens to be but this is looking pretty cool so now let's go ahead and prepare our project for a render all right so before we do a test render let's go ahead and make sure that our render settings are correct let's go to the camera tab here and i'm going to render our test renders at maybe something like 60 samples I will also go to the film tab here and then we'll make sure that transparent is selected. Then we will also make sure under the layer properties tab here that the mist pass is selected. This is so that if we want to add a layer of mist into our scene in a very systematic way, we could do that in our composite as we have the data. Under the resolution, we'll just keep it at 1920 by 1080 and we'll do it at 100% and we'll talk about output right after we do our test render. So let's just go ahead and go to render and render image. All right, so we're back and it took us about a minute and a half to render this frame here. It's looking pretty cool. A lot of good detail in the buildings and of course the background as well. Um, it's looking pretty cool, but let's go into compositing and see what we can do with it. So let's go to the compositing tab here. And to set up our compositing framework, we'll check the use nodes checkbox here. And this is our basic output node here. And we'll just kind of move this around. We want to press shift A and go to output and then output a viewer node. And that way we can see what we're looking at in the background. The composite node is going to be your final output. And then of course your viewer is just what you're going to be seeing here. So as you can see, we have the data for the mist pass here. So to use that, what we want to do is we want to add a mix node. So we'll just press shift A and we'll go to mix. And then we'll just attach the mist to the second pass here. And now what we can do is we can very systematically add a layer of mist coming into the background or all the way up close of course depending on your background and depending on your scene this might not seem right so you have to judge how much mist you should add based on the background you can also do a lot of crazy stuff like change the color of the mist or change the depth of the mist or the contrast of it but this is just kind of a basic way to add a mist pass if you're going to output your final composite from blender usually when i'm compositing my shots i use after effects as my compositor so what i'm going to do instead of doing these nodes what i'm going to do is i'm going to export my main image to my composite like it's shown here and then i'm going to create a new output by pressing shift a and then attaching our mist pass to that output and then choosing where we want those files to be by doing this essentially we have our main file output which will be our composite which we can choose the location of right here and then we have our mist pass which is going to be outputted separately which we can composite together with our main render i usually won't use a png sequence instead i will use the open open exr file format which tends to have a better workflow so to do that you would just change the file format here to open exr make sure it's rgba and then you would also want to create a new file output for the 
missed pass. And as you can see here, it's now an open EXR output as well. I wouldn't underestimate Blender's compositing tools. I think they're very powerful. However, I'm used to After Effects, so that's why I use it. Anyways, guys, to render out your final animation, you would choose your two final output options here, and then you would just go to Render, Render Animation, and then give your computer some time to render all of your frames. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. We hope you like these videos. We hope you like City Builder 3D. Let us know what assets or features you would like added next to the add-on, and I'll see you guys next time.